All right, so guys, we're having our serious break from the Book of Romans because we're celebrating Aliyah's uh, birthday slash dedication. So nadunga, no? All right. So before we start, I have a question. So we want to ask Marielle. And do you guys know kung, kung, if you are Nino or Ninang here? You guys already know who's who are the Ninos and Ninas here. All right. I have a question now, especially for Marielle. When Aliyah is, let's say, old enough to start dating, I have a question. Would you rather she chooses who she wants to date, or do you want the right to choose for her? You choose, or Aliyah chooses? Let her choose lang, yeah? let her choose. Okay, how about you guys? The Ninos and the Ninas. Aliyah will choose, or you choose for her? I choose. I choose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the thought? First. First. Sige. Romans 5, definitely read something. Read something, educate her. Okay. be like, Get his boyfriend, like that. Read, like, his okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably give, give her some books to read about, you know. Uyab, uyab, and yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And from then on, she will choose. Then let her choose. Right okay, okay. So yeah, so some will probably feel nga let her choose. Others naman, I will choose for her. And others, yeah, educate her, teach her. And then buy a gun just in case, no? So, so it really depends, no? But why did I ask that question? Because it's very much related to why we do baby dedications and baptisms, okay? So for those of you who don't know, um, how many of you, it's your first time to attend a baby dedication? First time. Okay. How many of you have attended baby baptisms before? Okay, more. All right, good. Uh, we've attended both, you know. Um, Ako personally, I grew up Roman Catholic, so I was very used to baby baptisms. And then when I first time, when it was my first time to attend a baby dedication, I said, "This is different. How come it's so different? What's what's the difference, Bajud?" And so, isn't it nice if you got to know the difference, so you know for yourself what it means, diba? So we're gonna go back to that question on marriage later on. Katong dating Alia. Yang dating life no ato lang isabutan when she's still very young. All right, so let's talk about the differences and why we have to go there. But before that, we need to ask a deeper question: Why do people do baptisms? Why do people do baby dedications in the first place? What's the point, di ba? And the answer is original sin. Everyone is familiar with the term original sin. Let me read a few verses. Uh, Psalm 51 says, Behold, I was brought forth in sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Another verse, Proverbs 22 verse 15 says, Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. And if you guys remember the story of Noah, katung na flood ang whole earth, di ba? And then after the whole earth got flooded, uh, na save sila sa ark, and then God sent a rainbow, and he made a promise and he said, I'm never going to flood the earth again. Here's what he says. When the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, this is the sacrifice, the burnt, the burnt offering that Noah made. When, when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. So from child palang. Okay? And a lot of people will say, dude, that's so mean to say. Are you saying? children are not innocent that children are have this tendency to be sinful well when you talk to parents especially parents who are who have kids nga kanang, uh, at the ages of three or four they'll probably tell you yeah it's so true no parent will ever teach his child to lie to cheat to steal it's kind of natural every parent will teach the child to be selfless to be generous to be considerate, to be respectful, diba? Because the natural tendency of man growing up is really to rebel. So the problem really is original sin. And both the Catholic Church and the Evangelical Churches try to address this problem of original sin. Okay? So we'll talk about, uh, because we all come, or most of us come from a Catholic background, we'll address that first. Okay? Here is the official catechism of the Roman Catholic Church 
from the Second Vatican, and there's only two Vatican's, ha? First one was before Pope John Paul II. The Second Vatican is after Pope John Paul II. So this is about the seven sacraments of the Church, chapter 1, article 1, sub-article 1213. Okay, so let me read it to you lang. Holy baptism is the basis of the whole Christian life and the gateway to life in the Spirit. In Latin, this is Vitae Spiritualis Ianua. And the door which gives access to the other sacraments. So for the Catholic Church, baptism is the first sacrament. And after you get baptized, you can receive all the other sacraments. If you are not yet baptized, bawal ka. You cannot receive any other sacrament. Confession, marriage, uh, confirmation, wala na tanan. Okay? Through baptism, we are freed from sin and reborn as sons of God. We become members of Christ, are incorporated into the church, and made sharers in her mission. Baptism is a sacrament of regeneration through water in the Word. So for the Catholic Church, once you're baptized, you're freed from sin, you're reborn as, as sons of God, you become members of Christ, you become members of the church, and you share in the mission of the church. Sub-article 1250, says this, Born with a fallen human nature and tainted by original sin, children also have need of the new birth in baptism to be freed from the power of darkness and brought into the realm of the freedom of the children of God to which all men are called. The sheer gratuitousness or the sheer generosity of the grace of salvation is particularly manifest in infant baptism. The church and the parents would deny a child the priceless grace of becoming a child of God if they were not to confer baptism right after birth. So the Catholic Church teaches nga, kailangan mabaptize. When you're baptized, you're saved. Guaranteed heaven. So if a child is born, gets baptized, and then dies, instant heaven. Okay, that's the beliefs. Okay? So that's the official teaching. Water becomes holy water. And then that is what cleanses original sin. Now the question is, are there any ba baby baptisms in the Bible? Will we find any baby baptized in Scripture? The answer is no. There is not a single baby baptism in Scripture. Does the Bible teach that baptism saves you from sin? Okay. The answer is another no. So what does the Bible say about babies? What does the Bible say we should do for babies? Is it baptism? Actually, in the Bible, what we see are baby dedications. So let me read three verses again. The first one was the birth of Samuel. Samuel is the prophet who actually ordained King David to become king. King Saul and then King David, no? So what happened was, ang parents ni Samuel was, well, this woman was barren. She couldn't give birth. And so she went to the temple and she started praying. And when she prayed, she was praying in such a way that her mouth was moving. You know, sometimes you pray like that, right? Or sometimes you read that way. We pray and then our mouths are moving but no words are coming out. It's also like that. So she was praying this way and she was kind of depressed and she was really sad. And then when she arrived there, the priest said, Woman, what are you doing? Are you drunk? Because she looks drunk. Her mouth is moving, no words are coming out. And then she explained that, you know, I'm, I'm barren, I'm praying to God for a child. And so finally, uh, after the priest said, it's okay, go continue praying. Here's 1 Samuel 1 verse 11. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me, and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head. In other words, di siya magpatupi. So there's a lifestyle. Okay? How about Samson? You guys know Samson? The guy who killed the Philist a lot of Philistines using a jawbone of a donkey. So Sam Samson, when he was born, he was also dedicated to God. The father, si Manoah, that's the father's name, spoke to the angel who said uh, you will have a son named Samson. And he said to Manoah, uh, he said to the angel, when your words come true, what is to be the child's manner of life and mission? So the angel said, Manoah, you're going to have a kid. He's going to be a boy. And so Manoah said, okay, when I have a, when I have a kid, what's he going to do? How is he going to live? And of course, Jesus. 
Jesus was also dedicated in the temple. Luke chapter 2 says, When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So, Jesus was dedicated when he was a kid. And of course, we know Jesus had a mission. So, a baby dedication has a connection. And the connection is your lifestyle. How you're going to live. Okay? So, it's not true na pag dedicate ka, that's it. Once a person is, a baby is dedicated, there's an expectant way of life. There's an expectation. Okay? What's the basis? What's the basis of a baby dedication? Why did they start doing this? Okay? Well, let's explain it. When Moses gave the law to Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, God gave specific instructions on how to raise children. So let's, let's hear it. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the street, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your houses and your gates. Can you imagine that when you have a kid? And then you write the Ten Commandments. You know some people, they have like placard of Ten Commandments. They put it in the house. They stick it to the door. Yeah? They're actually trying to obey this. So we're supposed to teach our children the ways of God. And so what does that mean? Mona Nirun. It means that for the child, when a child is dedicated, he becomes part of the community of the faith, but he's not yet really saved. He's just part of the community. So in this case, Aliyah, when we dedicate her, we're actually saying she's part of our church in a sense that we want to mentor her, teach her, guide her, train her, show her what it means to be a Christian, to love God, what the Bible says, and all that. That becomes our responsibility. What about the Ninos and the Ninans? Hello? The Ninos and the Ninangs, the goal or the role is not just to give gifts on Christmas and birthdays and, you know, special occasions. But the role of the godparents is to make sure that if, if let's say, Mariel is uh, not around for a certain period of time, the godparents are there to ensure that Aliyah is still moving towards Christ. Okay? In other churches, to become a Ninong and Ninang means if something happens to the parents, ang Ninong and Ninang ang mo-adapt. Okay, so that's uh, another uh, no, another implication. So that we as a church, we're supposed to co-parent and the parent is supposed to make an affirmation. The parent, so Mariel's role, is not just to, to teach Aliyah God's ways, but she is to be a pastor to her. As a pastor, the pastor is always thinking of two things. Number one, what is God doing in the spiritual life of every member of our church? So as your pastor, that's what, I, that's what plagues my brain. I have to keep thinking. I need to look at this. Lord, show me your hand. Show me how you're working in this person's life, in that person's life. Lord, how is this person growing? How is that person growing? You know, that's supposedly our role. So for a baby dedication today, Mariel's role is to always think, God, how are you working in my daughter's life? Lord, show me your hand in her life. What are the spiritual things that you're doing in her that's helping her grow, that's changing her? Is there a big, is there a love for God? Is there a love for the Bible in my daughter's life? If wala pa, how can I encourage her to read the Bible more? How can I do this? How can I do that? That's the role of the parent. The problem today is parenting has changed. Parents today uh, no longer parent, they simply provide. Basta mo hatag lang ko baon, hatag ko allowance, hatag ko gift. Good parent na ko. Di ba? We don't spend time anymore. Here's a few more examples. These days, parents allow sleepovers like as if it was nothing. Especially